Hi guys, how are you? My name is One Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. So let's do another one of those videos debunking fake MMT. All right. So uh, first of all, first of all, real vision is a disaster area. Okay. This has been around uh, since Raul Paul, whatever his name is, 2014 or 15. He was like, yeah, you know, the crash is coming. The, you know. And look at the ISM versus this and the, the business cycle and all. <laughs> and here's, you know, this guy and that guy. And they will tell you the secrets, how to become rich. And, uh, you know, so that the whole real vision, they charge people. I think the minimum they charge is like $2,500. It's a fucking disaster area. Disaster. Uh, everything they've, they've called is absolutely 100% wrong. So what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a place where you go give your money. $2,500 minimum, and they present you with a whole bunch of fucking bullshit artists, okay, and then they lead you to believe that you will make money from this inside information from the insiders, you know, the, the insiders, okay, and they have to whisper to you, because if they whisper, it makes you feel like, um, you know, they're telling you a secret that nobody else knows, okay, so it's just between us. You know, and that's how they fool people, you know, that's how they fool people. I think it was Chomsky, I don't know who it was, but they said, you know, whatever they're fucking telling you, and when I say they, I mean left, right, it doesn't matter, bull, bear, it doesn't matter, all those people, whatever they're telling you, the opposite is true. So, uh, when I say opposite, I don't mean uh, in the sense that if A is true, then B has to be true, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is that if A and B are telling you this, it's definitely C. It's, it's it's not what either of them are telling you. So always keep that in mind. Always, always, always keep that in mind, that it's all bullshit. All right, so let's get started with this video, and I'll just stop it and comment and continue. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, there we go. Harmony, did you see that real vision? I've described myself as a long-time insider uh, of monetary operations. He's an insider of monetary operations, and he has come out to tell us all what we should all do. I was isolated at the time with that opinion. It was mm -hmm. the entire trading desk. I'd been there a year. He was isolated the entire year, just all by himself in the corner, just sitting there in the little desk. Everybody else kind of dismissed it. Just the basic guy. They just dismissed what he said. Just a small little guy in the corner with this great... <laughs> with this great insight. Understanding of the logic behind the currency uh, was something I was interested in very early. The currency itself is a simple public monopoly. So it's the currency, it's a monopoly. It's a monopoly. Somebody it's says to me, how do we pay for the Green New Deal? I say, well, Congress appropriates the money and then uh, the Treasury instructs the Fed to credit the appropriate accounts. And that's how it's paid for. That's it. That just Congress says this, and you credit the account, and that's it. We're good to go. Fuck, we can fucking afford everything. What have we been doing all this time? <laughs> okay. You see how the st conversation starts? I've told you this before in previous videos, okay? What he is doing right now, okay? He's exploiting one thing, that everybody believes that money is value. Why do they believe that? Because they go out, they work, they produce a profit, they get a portion of that profit as income, and then they go out, they spend that money, and they get something in return. Okay? Why Why can't you buy something? Because you actually worked, you produced something, you were, you know, worthwhile uh, working, not just because you just showed up. Go out and start making Sony uh, fucking... Uh, what do you call it? Sony Walkmans and tell me how much profit you're going to make and how much income you're going to have. You're not going to make dick, right? <laughs> so you're going to starve to death. So you got to produce something that people want. You have to solve problems, right? Somebody's going to give you a profit and then you'll get a piece of that profit and as income and go off and do whatever it is you do. So that is what he is exploiting now. That everybody just accepts that money and value are the same thing. Okay. And you will all believe it because you all work and you all see it every single day. But the reality is, what's the reality? The reality 
is you cannot print money and say it's value. You can't do it. Okay. You are borrowing that money. Okay. You're borrowing that money from the private sector. And then you can go out and spend it. Okay. If that was not true, then you know what? We can all just fucking sit home, never go to work, print the money, send me a fucking paycheck. Off we can go and do whatever the hell it is we want to do. Play video games, sit on our couch, never go to work. None of us. None of us. Because according to Mosler, the conversation, the way it began is, well, you just, uh, you know, Congress uh, instructs and uh, credits account and we're good to go. That's it. So you don't need to be a rocket science, rocket scientist to figure this out. Okay. This is very simple. If you cannot sit home and just get a paycheck from the government and then go out and spend, then MMT is bullshit. Two, if a government could just print fucking money at will and just give free this, free this, free this, free this, and free that, and that, 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 and that, then guess what? No nation in the history of mankind would ever hyperinflate. Never. Never, 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 never. Because they are the monopolist. And they can print value for a currency. And whatever money that they uh, produce, its value, they would never have to borrow in a foreign currency, ever. But why do they borrow in a foreign currency? Because they trash their currency, because they overprint. But yet, you know, this categorical kind of thought that people have, and they just accept things for what they are, and it makes sense to them and intuitively, right? In reality, it's it's not true. One... You cannot sit home and the government give you a, a paycheck. We all sit home and you know give you a paycheck. You go out and spend. And number two, no country would ever go uh, bankrupt and go you know hyperinflate the currency. It would never happen if it was the way Mosler, the bullshit artist, uh, is saying it. All right. So yeah, pay attention here. And then the Green New Deal people go, yeah, that. <laughs> the cause of unemployment by design is taxation mm -hmm. for the further purpose of the government provisioning itself. See, unemployment is taxation. What's taxation? Where's taxation come from? The government. Well, fuck. It's evil government. Evil government. Because I just explained to you that the government could just print money and we can have all these great things for free. And they just, they force unemployment on you because of taxation. They force it on you. It's its the evil government's fault. So what we need to do is take over government, stop taxing people, and fucking print money. Because printing money equals value. Remember what I told you in the beginning. Whatever they're selling you, the complete opposite is true. Okay? Remember that. All right, so three minutes into this video... You already you've been bombarded with fucking bullshit. All right? Already bombarded with bullshit. So let's continue. Desire to actually understand the mechanics of how the treasury market work. Can you take us back to your trading days? Right. So probably uh, best to start at Bankers Trust in mm -hmm. 1976, primary dealer. I was, they brought me in from nowhere to be vice president of Ginny Mae's a sales and trading or something like that. Uh, that was so, what was I, 27 years old. And being there on the money desk there, I was in the middle of all the discussions. The economists were in there, Alan Lerner. Alan Rogers was the trading manager. Jay Pomerantz was my mentor. He had brought me in, the, the Ginny May trader. And it was the beginning of derivatives. It was the beginning. Uh, we were the first to start making markets, forward markets. Mm -hmm. And uh, were Fed watchers. Everybody was a Fed watcher. And you watch what they did. I remember coming in every morning and, and looking to see how many bonds the Bank of England bought. And it was, oh, what if the Bank of England doesn't buy the debt? What's ever going to happen to the United States? And then it moved on to, I don't know, Japan and the Saudis, and now it's China, whatever. And of course, it's never made any difference. And I noticed that pretty quickly. And so you start thinking about why it would or would not matter whether the the Bank of England bought the debt, or, or whether uh, the Fed came in to do repos, well, what's that? What are they doing? They're buying securities. Well, why does that matter? What accounts are they debiting? What are they crediting? How is the, the, the uh, what, what's going on inside of monetary operations? So I've described myself as a longtime insider, uh, 
of monetary operations themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's very revealing, those types of things. So I remember when they raised the um, reserve requirements back, it must have been 1977 or something, and a trading manager said, uh, well, I hope the Fed doesn't just give the banks the money because the money supply is too high. They need to bring it down. And I said, well, they have to because if they don't, you know, in the first instance, it's going to be an overdraft if your reserve requirement's raised. I don't know how I knew that. And then uh, my uh, Cliff Finer, who became my partner later, uh, called. He was at um, Phoenix Mutual, and there was an article by uh, Eric Heinemann and Morgan Stanley saying the same thing. Um, you know, the Fed should, shouldn't give the banks the money this time. We should let the money supply go down. And I explained it to Cliff, and he called them back, and they gave him some double talk. And we discussed that, and he called them back, and he calls me. He says, they withdrew their statement. <laughs> they agree that the Fed will add to reserves. Okay, and so... Oh, Full of a fucking bullshit, stupid fucking story. You think the fucking Fed didn't fucking understand that if they raise the reserve requirements that the the banks are not going to be solvent? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, here, well, you know, I think it's just, uh, you know, like, give me a fucking break. That's like the biggest bullshit fucking story. And then they withdrew their, uh, their statement because of me. See, people, people are wowed by this kind of stuff, okay? Uh, because, you know, they do whatever they do in their daily lives, right? But the reality is, this is, this is garbage. This is pure garbage. If George Soros didn't understand, and all the other people that follow Soros didn't understand monetary policy, right, they would have never became billionaires. Sorry, they would have never became billionaires. So if you watch the rest of the video, and I don't want to continue on with this, if you watch the rest of the video, oh, you know, we went to Italy and there was a, a spread and, you know, we, we, we found that spread and then we were making money off that spread till everybody else figured it out and then, you know, it just uh, the spreads tightened and, and from that, we ended up with, oh, yeah, we can have all this free stuff. Don't worry about it. It's good to go. Good to go. We can have freebies. We don't have to go to work anymore. Don't worry about it. No hyperinflation. All the hyperinflation that you saw before was just... Don't worry about it. It's fine. This is a cute story, okay? They're selling you a cute story. And if you don't understand that it's bullshit, you're going to believe it, okay? 20 years ago, nobody even knew what a central bank was, nor did anybody care. Today, everything is a bubble, and the Fed sucks, and the Fed is no good, and uh, it's useless, and it's this, and it's that. Everybody's a fucking expert today on uh, on the Fed. And still, and still to this day, right, everything they say about the Fed, completely fucking wrong. QE is fucking wrong, TARP is wrong, raising interest rates is wrong. Lowering interest rates is wrong. When they unwind, it's fucking wrong. When they fucking um, um, start raising rates, is going to be wrong. Everything is fucking wrong. And you know who's wrong? Everybody that says anything about the Fed. Longest job expansion in history. Longest economic expansion in history. Biggest fucking bull market in history. There's more jobs than people looking for jobs. And, you know, that's the reality of it. Right? Nobody saw it coming, including this little man over here who never lost a trade. Okay, You know what he was saying back in 2015? Uh, he said, oh, it looks like the Fed uh, has raised interest rates during a recession. Right, Mr. Fucking, uh, I understand economics and the monetary system. And I'm an insider, and I'll tell you. For four fucking years, he's been telling you we're going to have a recession and a crash and all this bullshit. He's been peddling around, oh, we need a job guarantee uh, because there's so, so many people unemployed. So many people unemployed. We have more jobs than people looking for jobs. 3.7% unemployment. Never fucking saw it coming. Never saw it fucking coming. Right? But he's an insider. You should listen to him. If you listen to him for four years, you would have been shorting the market and he would have been fucking bankrupt by now. MMT fantasies. It's all fucking bullshit. Designed to fool the little man. That's all it is. So that's it, guys. Uh, I'll do some more videos later on. Uh, <laughs> don't don't be fooled. Be smart. Keep it real. Keep it pure. MMT. Take care. Bye bye.